Hello and welcome to this first podcast about Ted Ebert's book My Life as a Photographer with Massey Ferguson. My name's Campbell Scott, formerly of Massey Ferguson myself and I worked with Ted for many years. Now in these short series of podcasts we want to find out more details about about the information that's in the book. And in this first one I'm in conversation with Ted about what actually motivated him to produce the book in the first place and then some details and advice about the skills and art of the farm machinery photographer. Right, well we're, we're back in a very familiar place Ted, we're in the Massey Ferguson, Massey Ferguson Social Club, um, yes. this must bring back a few memories. Oh yes, I can remember when this uh, extension was uh, built. In uh, 1963, I believe it was. Oh, right. And I see and I, that. I think I still have the photographs in my files. All oh, right. Of, uh, of it to, in the process of being built. Oh, crikey. And I see a lot. Yes. Actually, I can see a lot of what presumably are your photographs. Pretty well, the majority of them are, yes. And uh, they're actually, um, you know, I loaned them to the club mm-hmm. forevermore. Just oh. so the people that come in, the members... Majority all worked at, at uh, Massey's, obviously, and they can l- see the pictures from time to time and, rem- and remind them of the good times, because they were good times. Oh, yes, oh, believe yes. me. And and, and, we've, we've and, uh, and from time to time, I very often pop in here myself, purely just to inspect the pictures, see if they're still here and still there. Uh, anything much sort of renovating with them. Well, I see you've got a pint, uh, is that John oh, Smith? Oh, yes, I, I always like a pint yeah. of John Smith from the, time to time. That'll that's, hopefully... that's, that's my local uh, lo- local drink when I can get it, you see. And is that, it, I see Harry Ferguson is actually watching over us. Oh, um, as from we where speak. we're sitting now, yes. Harry Ferguson is watching. Yes. He used to have eyes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what I can remember when I first saw him. But anyway, what we were we're here today for is when you were just going to run a series of these little podcasts about uh, about your book, um, My Life as a Photographer, uh, by Ted Everett. Uh, for those of you that you know need reminding about your mm. your second name, um, because to everybody, of course, you're Ted the photographer. That's just um, right. Where's but, but, Ted? Where's Ted? <laughs> <laughs> but coming back to the book, Ted, um, great project. What 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 got you started going down that road? Well, it it goes back a little. It was when I was actually working. Uh, well, it, it, in the, in the about two thousand five, two thousand six, I first had one or two people say. You want to write a book, Ted, you know, and but I didn't take a lot of notice of it. And then from time to time, people kept coming up and saying, mm. "It's about time you wrote a book, Ted." Why? Why you do were, you think they were? They were and I, I kept you saying, write "Well, the book. why?" They said, "Well, with where you've been and what ah. you photographed, and you photographed mm. every sort of model that was built at Banalane. Mm-hmm. You followed them through. You did the service manuals, instruction books, brochure photography. You must have." plenty of memories, you, mm. you know, enough to write books. One or two people were saying to this. But at first I didn't really take a lot of notice of it. But then as time went on, odd things should have struck me and I thought, yeah, that's a good story, you know. And I put it in the back of my mind and it and it sort of built up from there. And then I suddenly thought, well, I'll have to think I might. I might try and do a book. And then, um, but I kept putting it off. For some reason, I just didn't get round to it. Then all of a sudden, I went on holiday and I got a, a pad and there, and I was up on deck, and I suddenly started. Sorry, you were up on deck. What do you mean? Up on, deck? A, on a ship. Oh, you I were on a ship. Holiday on a ship. Right. Do you up know which deck. part of the world you were in at this particular point in time? Uh, that that part of the world. Yes, I was in the Caribbean. Oh, there you right? go. Yes. And uh, in, in actual fact. I think what nudged me, it was Antigua at the time, we, we, we walked down into the, the main street, main town there, and what came round the corner was a 240 tractor mm-hmm. pulling a trailer. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I can't go anywhere without seeing a oh, no, grassy no, tractor. No, no, no. Uh, and that was in the morning. And then when we got back to the ship, we got up on deck. And uh, I, got this, I got the notepad out of the... The, the beach bag whatever um, 
I thought, right, I think I might start now. And I'd, I'd got things in my mind from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I knew all, I, I'd already uh, spoke about when I started mm-hmm. and how I started and... Uh, and at that, stage, people at that for, stage, were you looking at it as a as, that, as a book with a lot of photographs yeah. in it, um, and every story matched a well, photograph? No, I'll or? put in the stories together mm-hmm. first, okay. and then as it hit, yes, I've got a photograph of that. Yes, I can, yeah, I can sort that, and I carried on, mm-hmm. sort of writing a, a bit at a time, mm-hmm. and then while I was writing the stories, as it coming to my mind. Yes, I've got, yes, I've got a picture that will fit in for that, mm-hmm. and I was sort of putting it together in that way, mm-hmm. and and that's how it started. And whilst I was on uh, on holiday, at what I've said earlier, uh, I think I managed to do around about six or seven full scap pages of right. writing during that holiday. Mm-hmm. And did you start um, from the beginning and work? Your oh way yes, I started. Time, yes. No, I started. Yes. As from the front, as you yes, read as in you the, read book. the book. Yes. If, if, if anybody's had the book, mm-hmm. that's how I started mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, and as we went on, there were an odd one or two stories that later on I thought, oh, I forgot to put that, I should put that in. So I referred it back to the, the era which it should be. So I was adding to it and right. sometimes going back I missed that out in 1956 oh, or yes. 1965 or whatever. So when you came, when came, you came like when that, when and you, I put them in. When you came back from the cruise, you'd got you got seven or eight pages. Well, well, when, yeah. When we came back holiday, uh, for holiday there, we um, well, I'd say we because I, I got encouragement from uh, my wife Kate, um, and, and and even the daughter Jane as well said, you know, are you doing some more on your book and. Just, uh, you know, no, I've got to go out and do a job tonight. You know, I'll, I'll, don't worry, I'll get on with it. I think at that and that's stage, how I gradually uh, built it up, stage by yes. stage. And as I say, it took me around about just over eighteen months oh, for oh, me you, yeah. to get the book done because I kept referring back to it, checking, and it. I knew pretty well where I've got the pictures. Mm-hmm. I've got them more or less most of the pictures at my fingertips. The only one I might have had a difficulty of locating, but I did locate in the end, was the pictures of, of La Plessy when I used to go to France. Oh, yeah. At that in the stage, late 70s. I, I was just going to remind everyone listening that, of course, you, Kate, your, your good lady, also worked in. Oh, my God, oh well, yes, well, I met, well, Ferguson, I, I met Kate in late 1958, to, uh, coming into 59. Uh, well, I, I did know of her anyway, I did know her out to Fletch. Mm. But just past the time of day, okay. And it was just a question of, do you fancy going to a date at, uh, at Chesford Grange? Oh my goodness! Uh, me, and it, yes, I think it was. Yes, a, yes. I think basically it was a Christmas dance, right? And, um, and that's how it all started. Okay. Now, so Kate presumably was able to give you a bit of a bit of added information as well. Well, she, cert- know, she certainly the, did the, the, with the, the layout the of Fletch. Yes, because yeah. that was a god thing. I knew I knew pretty well most of it, mm-hmm. but uh, I I let Kate check it because she, she, when she first started, she worked in postal, right. so she would know where she delivered the posts. Right. And when she looked at the, my sort of sketch of the layout, she said, "You've missed." I think it was the print room out, okay. and I think it one was the. Uh, the toilets next to the HR department, and which Fletch, we, in them um, days we called it personnel. Yeah, the Fletch, which actual fact I've just not long ago had a had a coffee at a Starbucks up um, on the A45, and that's actually the Fletch was the the original Harry Ferguson. That's it. It's right where McDonald's and, the, uh, and yeah. that just of area, mm-hmm. and in actual fact. There's still some of the green sidings there, the grass. Uh, yes. And I only spot. I only went the other. I think it was Monday this week. Right. Uh, oh, sorry, Tuesday this week. Yeah. And I looked, and I deliberately drove slow, and I could see yeah. it. And I thought, 
that's where I did the mower on that grass oh. with, where they got yeah. from the service department, Ron Park, and he was named for, and it, I think it was used for the little instruction book, and it used it for the front cover. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, but, but go, in them days, it, they, was, they were black and white in them days, them yeah, pictures. Well, see? anybody listening, luckily, you be luckily to the Harry well, I have Ferguson that picture. Place. I have that picture, well, that and picture. that picture, I believe, is in the book, I think. Ah, okay. It's easy. Yeah, I was just going to say that anybody that wants to to go for a Starbucks and in Coventry, there's a bit of Massey Ferguson history yeah. right well, there, where the McDonald's well, is, uh, and yeah, it's, in the island was, in the it, middle of the... I would say it was Harry Ferguson history, in, in actual fact, at yeah. the time, you know, and uh, yes, there it is. There it is. What page is that, Ted? There it is. There's a side. There's a tall little line, see? Oh, yeah. What page is that on? Just Pardon? Like, what page is it that on? Page, well, you find... You find all there, Harry Ferguson and the Green Verge, on page uh, 26. Page 26 of the book. Yeah, and also, well, 25 and 26, which 25 yeah. is the Antarctic tractors. So probably the only thing remaining of the, the Harry Ferguson site oh, is yeah, that Green Verge. Not, not that yeah. guy there, like. <laughs> anyway, co coming back to the book project itself, because in another um, episode we're going to talk in detail about the Fletch and the early years, but coming back to the book itself, so... So you'd got the draft of the book um, completed over about 18 months. Uh, yes. And then, then how did you move from there to actually to, to, to making it all happen and um, well, having the book available? Was it a difficult job selecting the uh, photographs? You mean or? sort of to get somebody to sort of... Uh, well, what I mean is, you've got the story, uh, but was it was it a difficult job selecting all the photographs, um, you know, or did you already have all those photographs? In I mind? got the photographs sorted. You got all those in on, mind, on, yeah. on discs and marked up, yeah. and uh, a couple of photographs I may have had to copy and then put onto a disc and that sort of thing. Uh, no, I as I went along from time to time, and I've done a certain bit of the, of the of the book the story shall we say i then researched and got the photographs to to go with with the stories mm. as i went along and then i would proceed then further stories and when i'd done a fair bit i would go back to my files and sort the picture the appropriate pictures out for the book right. and that's how i proceeded with it of course uh things got to uh, move in and Printed and I went to Emerson's, the, the printers, uh, a couple of weeks before it was the launch, which we we um, proposed to have a, a, once again at Massey Club, mm -hmm. which we, we thought was the ideal place to have the uh, That's right. the um, mm. the launch in, in the big room because we could get a number of people. Well, hopefully, I was hoping that we get a number of people at the time. Um, how successful do you think the, the the book was, and how pleased have well, you been as the as the? Well, we know author? it was quite successful because the 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 books just flew out the door, mm. and within I think a week or a few days, Campbell came and said, "We've got to order some more books." Yeah, that's right. So mm. you know, so but um, anyway, we hung on until it almost went. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, we can probably order another 200. But we went to a little gathering <laughs> one uh, one day and we met one or two other colleagues. Mm. And in the end, I think there must have been about 20, 25 of us met up at this pub That's in right. Warwick. Mm. We were talked into, you've got to order 500. So yeah. me and Campbell looked yeah. at each other. Yeah. Campbell, he said, right, Ted, I'll get, a, I'll get that sorted. <laughs> and so, and, and even so, uh, books have moved, and we so we're just on the sort of, the last sort of straight, yeah. I would say, to uh, finalise the finishing sales of the, the of the book. It's, it's something that um, I've achieved. Mm -hmm. and, and no, it's, that book will always be with me and I'm telling you now even this morning I was reading my book again and just in other words I was sort of re recapping and rechecking in actual fact uh, now that book I, I'm, it's something I've achieved in my life 
and I hope that it sort of goes down in a little bit of history with Massey Ferguson with a lot of the enthusiasts. Well done, Dan. And all I can say is thank you very much for all those people that have managed to buy my book. Okay, so Dad, while well, we well, 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 uh, have a sup of your pint, I'll have a know, sup, and, yeah. On subsequent um, discussions, we're going to look much more at the the products and the uh, and you know the Massey Ferguson stories. But what, what I'd like, a lot of people would be interested in your book from the photographic side. Mm-hmm. And what I'm keen to discover is that um, you know you you were a photographer. How many years in total were you? Well, oh. Uh, for- I was 66 and a half years. 66 and a half years. So I think it's fair to assume that you would know a little bit about photographing a piece of farm machinery. So so the first question I wanted to ask you was, um, what, what tips would you have for a, a photographer as to how to go about photographing a piece of farm equipment? Let's well, leave aside the technical details for the minute because we'll talk about the, the equipment that you used over the years. But let's say you've received an instruction or a request, let's yes, say. Yes, it's like, say, uh, if it's a combine. Yes. Shoot. Well, we've got a combine we want to take pictures of. Can you sort perhaps a site round a certain area of Stone Lake or Warwickshire area, mm-hmm. whatever? Uh, we perhaps would go then to have a look at the site and one of the first things that I would look for in these fields is we don't want telegraph poles oh, yeah. sticking out in here I know it's hard to sort of come across these places but you can and that was one of the one of the things that I would look for uh, is it, I don't really want telegraph poles in the pictures sometimes you couldn't help you know, you had no choice. The other thing is, you work out the sun. Right. If you think you look at the sun, it arises from your left and it carries right on to the right. Mm-hmm. So you look at the field and see how long you've got, say, in the morning, where that sun's going to be, and where the sun will be later on in the afternoon. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times... I always thought the best light is later on in the daytime mm-hmm. when the sun is that little bit lower mm-hmm. and it gives you a little bit more texture in the crops and background mm-hmm. and, and the sky. Um, that was something I always used to look for. The same applied, say, for, for tractors if we were going to do a, a plough and shoot or or a drill shoot, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I would very often, if I got the chance, go and see that particular, provided it was local, of course, mm-hmm. uh, and go and have a look at the fields that and they were that, going that, to that, use, that and point. I could make my mind up then. Yeah. And sometimes I would have access to sketches of drawing what the mm. brochures were going to be. Yeah. And so I could have an idea which way the tractor they yes. wanted moving. Is it, is it going to face the right side of the book or the left side of the book or the cover? You know, right. So I could work it out with the light. Yes, that, that was where what I was we ask. could, was which angle we were point. going to do, where they would start yeah. the ploughing, which end they would start it, or mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So you you've gone to the field with a vision Very inside often. your head as to where the tractor or the combine or, uh, or where do you think it's going to be start sitting or whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and even though it was a place like at Stonely, where we had uh, implements or tractors and machine, and we wanted pictures, sort of static pictures or whatever, um, I had got two or three spots there mm-hmm. where I knew what time the best time would be do to mm-hmm. do the pictures. So it's basically it's um, so once you've got the, the once you've got the location and the scene, what's the next step? So you've got you've got the because I remember working with you and you would tell me exactly where to put the tractor exactly which uh, when I would start to, be, to do the picture. Yes, because very often as you know, Campbell, mm. right? You say with a mower, just for instance, a particular job we did once. Yeah, I want you to do three or four runs, mm-hmm. right? Um, so that you've got the so, crop in the so background. So we're in the crop yes. when the photographs 
yes. are being taken. Yeah. Do three or four runs. That's applied also with ploughs, whatever, mm. implements, even with, yeah. with combine harvesters, balers. Let it, so in the picture, you could see work has been done. Mm. Right? And his crop to be done mm -hmm. in, in the picture. So you've and got a mixture of both. Yeah, how did you always make sure that it looked technically correct? You it, know? Uh, um, uh, make sure it looked what? Look technically correct, you know, that the. Well, the, I think. Was that your job or was the. Well, it other it people wasn't involved? Really, really my job, but I picked it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it just something that came to me. It didn't. If something mm -hmm. didn't look right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I would say no, move on. I don't like, you know. It's, um, it was just one of those things that yeah. I don't know. I, I just picked it up. Um, and in in the early years, it, okay, how how did the process work? So somebody did somebody tell you they wanted a photograph? Did they send you a memo? Did they telephone you? How did it work? Very no, very in often. Very in the early years, very often, the person who wanted these pictures mm -hmm. would be with me. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think in the early, I picked up these hints yes. and technical issues. Mm -hmm. Because late, in later on years, I went out and did the job myself I and job. I looked for these things. Yeah. So it's something I'd learned from the early years. Yeah. Um, and, and I remembered them and I knew a lot of times that what to look for mm -hmm. and a bit of a word about the the equipment that you used and how it changed over the years i mean <laughs> oh the cameras <laughs> yes the, the i mean <laughs> do you want me to go through back to the box camera my auntie's well, box camera I mean, but what, what, no when, but when, when i you started your first photograph for massey for, for, <coughs> well it would be massey harris ferguson in those well, days oh well it's Matt harry ferguson um well after two or three weeks Mm -hmm. uh, I started to learn to do pictures with an old Watson camera, wooden camera, mm -hmm. um, and then it was like a plate camera. Right. It was a half plate job with um, cut film, mm -hmm. which is uh, six and a half by four and three quarter size film. Right. Which you loaded up in the dark, and then there were slides you put them into the back of the, the camera. And then it, uh, that's that's how I started, and then we u I used that then as a copying camera after that because I then had a, an MPP micro precision product, and that was a five by four, the same sort of procedure with a slide. Mm -hmm. It was a two sided slide, so you got two bits of film in one side and one the other side, so you and could were, take did, two did with slides. Did you have to do the the whole thing? You had to, you had to obviously load it up. You yes, oh yes, that yeah, was my responsibility. Of, yes. There's your slide, I was showed, they showed me in the daylight. Uh, it was done with an old piece of film or an, an old negative that mm -hmm. had been processed. Then you'd do that in the dark then, mm -hmm. so you couldn't see what you were doing in the dark. And another thing that I always did when I was in the dark, I always closed my eyes because what's the use of having your eyes open? In the dark, you can't see. Yeah, yeah. And so you used to light it, shut the thing, turn it over, put another one in, shut the, shut the slide up, and that's how I loaded those up. Uh, so there, I, I started really on a 5 4 then mm -hmm. to start to take pictures in the showroom, oh, which yes. we had at Fletch. Mm -hmm. And that is when I first. I think well, one of the first times, I think it was the second time I met Harry Ferguson. Right. Because I'll, I'll never forget the first time because that negative, I still have that negative in my files today, the original negative that was taken of that portrait, what you see up there. Yeah. <coughs> Later on, we'll come about how it got to colour. But yeah. it was a black and white picture my boss took before I even started work. Yeah. And I printed those prints off that negative. What was the name of your boss? So <coughs> My boss name? was Bill Felton. Bill Felton. Yeah, and well, I, I really, I things, really yes. owed my career to him. Mm -hmm. I, a, a lot of respect for that guy. Mm -hmm. He, he always took the time and trouble to see that I was doing things mm. right and, 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 and was I happy and what, you know, and said, 
listen, you might be better to do it this way or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was always helpful. He guided me. Yeah. And I really, I owe it to that. He was a wonderful man. Yeah. He never panicked. Yeah. He, he, he worried underneath. Yeah. And some people sort of mistreated him. Right. But, yeah. you know, I well, always... Ted I, Ted, I never, in all the times I worked with you, I never saw you panic either. So I think you, you must have been a... Maybe, well, maybe in, under the surface you were panicking, but you never showed I didn't. It. No, I never thought, never I never thought it. about it. I'll get on with the job. I'll yeah. get it done. It was my attitude. <coughs> I, think yeah. it, I think it stemmed really from school yeah. because I was probably a bit, I don't know, could we say loud mouth or something? No, no, that's no, no, I was, no, 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 that, I don't believe that. I was school moment. captain. I right. was very school captain right. because I got my voice across. Yes. And Authoritative, I think, is the right word. But, but anyway, it may, listen, it may let's, be let's because come, of that, let's come, maybe. let's come back to the photography side. And um, So once you'd taken the photograph, what, how long did it take then before you actually got... Well, it, the, it, the, it, the it, end it, product, and what was the end product when you took a Yeah, well, it, 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 it depended really. I mean, okay, we start we start with black and white, really, because it was the black and white era when I started, of course. Um, well, I used to take the photographs, right, and then I would go when I'd finished the job, depending on the time of the day, go back and process those films. Mm -hmm. I always process my own films mm -hmm. from year dot. Mm -hmm. I always. And what, what did, did my own involve? processing I mean, that, that and then when I got the negative stuck, yeah. dried, finished, done I was the one that was going to print them right. Is this like you used to see in old films where you'd have things hanging up Yes, know, well I'm going to say and, and the yeah. processing time mm -hmm. it used to be yeah, in a, in the, old, the, the name of the developer D76 there, I used to process them for about 15 minutes and then a quick um, quick wash quick. Uh, this was in the dark mm -hmm. and then into the fixing uh, bowl them for about three minutes and then I could. Do you guys want another drink or not? No, no, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. And then I would um, then put them through the wash, which would take about another 20 minutes. So the process was roughly about an hour before I hung the films up or the, or the, the, uh, the plate film up to dry. Another 20 minutes. Then I could go into the dark room then and then print them. Mm -hmm. And I used to do the prints probably eight by six size or ten by eight size, mm -hmm. all and, and, like and, all glossy prints, and, and, and see them through the wash mm -hmm. and to the finishing off on the drum, dried out, stamped and numbered, then delivered to the person who ordered and, and that were, job. Were you, were that you always pleased with what what came out the other end, or, or were there occasions when I always hoped that they would be pleased? Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, Very often I was, yeah, fairly satisfied with my work yes. and I just hoped that they were pleased. Yeah. And as look at it, I can't remember many complaints. Well, Ted, we're, um, we're coming to the end of this, um, this session and, and it's been wonderful to hear your, your, your stories about uh, the skill in art of photography. Um, for, the, for those people listening who, who would like to get a copy of the book, there well, it's on Amazon. You go on to Amazon. Look, Ted Everett, my life as a photographer. Yes. Uh, at this stage in time, there's, <coughs> there's there's just under a couple of hundred available, um, and there will be a link down below where where you can also click on it. It'll take you straight to 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 the Amazon site. But um, what I wanted to finish this off with, Ted, um, a young photographer coming into the world. <laughs> It's a different world today, of course, to when you first started, but they want to have a career photographing farm machinery. What would be your, your best little piece of advice to give to them as we round off this session? Well, if, you, if they were lucky enough to get into that profession, mm -hmm. uh, I can't see how they could not enjoy that life. Because so I, I certainly did. There was nothing better for me to get up in the morning early, jump in the car provided by the company with my equipment and off down the road or up to north, like for example, to go out and have a day in the field photographing agricultural equipment, especially Marshy Ferguson, of course. And 
At the end of the day, the satisfaction, that was a good day, and driving back. Next morning, the joy of processing your films and looking at your results. And that's, I used to get the satisfaction of seeing the end product <laughs> and supplying it to the people that needed it for the brochures, whatever. Okay, so that's the end of this first session. Thanks for listening, and that's from Ted Everett. Thank you for listening. And from Campbell Scott, thank you until next time.